Vom technischen Gesichtspunkt aus hat die Klemme durch die geometrische Anordnung der Federn und der Drehpunkte eine praktisch konstante Klemmkraft, auch im Falle einer Änderung des Seildurchmessers. Weiters hat die Klemme einige technische Details aufzuweisen. Zum Beispiel ist der Transport schon gelocht, wodurch eventuelle Schnee- und Eisanhäufungen einfach durch die Löcher durchgedrückt werden können. Die Klemme hat auch einen Längspendeldämpfer, welcher die Schwingungen der Sessel oder Kabinen in den Stationen und in der Linie reduzieren. Weiters kann die Klemme durch geeignete Werkzeuge auf einfache und vor allem sichere Art zerlegt und wieder zusammengebaut werden. At the beginning, the needles are removed. By unscrewing the four head cap screws, the transport plate can be removed. Push the grip into the maintenance stand and open using the hydraulic cylinder until the castle nuts are loose. Remove the splin pins, castle nuts and washers off the spring guides. Screw both extensions off the spring guides and release the grip again. The extensions can be unscrewed and the spring assemblies removed. Loosen a split pin at the upper pin of the spring guide. Unscrew a grease nipple. Remove the cover plate and pull the pin out of the grip jar. Remove the grip springs with both spring plates. Remove the two spring guides. Secure the carrier in the lifting device and lift. Secure the device with bolts. Then remove the guide roller. Okay. Remove both spring pins on the grip jar. And knock out the bolts with a fitting cone. Sequentially dismantle all individual parts of the carrier damping. Remove the spring guide pins. Unscrew the head cap screws and pull the grip body out of the hanger. The carriage rollers, coupling roller, bolts and bearing bushings can be removed with the appropriate devices. The bearing bushings should always be replaced by new ones.
after checking the individual parts according to the manual, start assembly in reverse order. Before assembly, all bolts must be lubricated with grease. Also lubricate the brake linings of the carrier damping sufficiently. Once the grip body has been inserted into the hanger, lubricate through the grease nipple until the grease comes out of the sides. Assemble the individual parts of the carrier damping in the correct order according to the manual. fitting off the guide roller. The grip can be lowered again in order to proceed with the further assembly steps. Fit the bolts and spring guides and secure. Insert the grip jar, fit the bolt and secure with the spring pins. Fit the coupling roller with bolts and secure. Fit the spring plates and springs. Important, the spring ends must be at the lowest point. Fit the upper bolt of the spring plate and secure. Insert the springs into the spring plate and screw on the extensions. Release the lifting device Open the grip using the hydraulic cylinder Unscrew the extensions and fit the spacer disc and castle nut and secure with a splint pin Fit the transport plate and secure with the four hex socket head cap screws. Fit the needles and secure with the spring pins. 
The grip can be released again. All screws and nuts must be tightened to the torque specified in the manual. Set the measuring cell of the maintenance stand to zero, open the grip and insert the pin with nominal diameter. Release the grip and open again until the force measuring pin is released. Read the measured value and enter it in the table provided. Insert the bolt with minus 8% rope diameter into the grip and close the grip. The clearance between the bolt and spacer disc must be more than 1 mm. The grip slipping control is carried out at the exit of the tensioning station. Bring the grip into position, lower the device and place it on the grip. By manual releasing the pressure in the tension cylinder, run the grip towards the device until the display on the measuring cell reaches the minimum force according to the manual. Return the grip and remove the device.